is our opportunity. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. The countenance of a friend sharpens the countenance of his friend. Oh Lord, we are praying. Sharpen us today. Amen. Open us to the form you intend. Oh Lord, help us to be effective battle axes on the mission field in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Skills we need to be our best for you. Oh Lord, help us to learn wisdom tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, because we know your answer. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty and victorious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Tonight, we still come to Joshua, and I'm reading Joshua chapter 2. Verses 25, I mean, verses 23 and 24. And by the grace of God, we are looking at reports of responsible servants. We will do part one tonight and we'll do part two next week. This is a message for leaders. Joshua chapter 2, verse 23. And the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord had delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of this. Here we find Joshua sent the two spies on an assignment. And this assignment was an assignment with national interest. It was not an assignment for leadership interest, it was an assignment for the interest of the nation. Men returned after a few days. And they brought report back to Joshua. This is the way it should be. The Bible says, so the two men returned and descended from the mountains and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. It's necessary for us when we are sent on assignment to give report. And every month, as a pastor, God has sent you on assignments. Was an assignment to pastor the local church for the month. And God expects you at the end of the month to give report so that we can see how things are doing. This is similar to the attitude and the action of the disciples of Jesus. Jesus sent them to go and preach the gospel. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 6, verse 30, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus. If Joshua sent you, gather yourself unto Joshua. If Jesus sent you, gather yourself unto Jesus. It will be absurd for Joshua to send you, then you gather yourself, and then you are going to go and be giving a report to somebody else because it's your favorite. It doesn't happen that way. If Jesus sent you on assignment, it will be you know, out of place for you to come back and then go and give reports to the Pharisees. He said there, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. The person that has sent you an assignment, there is a necessity of giving a report back, not report to somebody else. Servants are accountable to their master. People are accountable to their leaders to give reports when even projects to implement or tax to tackle. It is an evidence of responsibility. You remember when we were going to read it later, 
Luke chapter 19, a certain noble man went to that country to receive for himself a kingdom and to come back. And before he left, he gave his servants a pound each and said, occupy till I come. When he came back, the servants came to him and each one of them gave a report of their stewardship, what they have done. It's normal. Matthew 25 is a parable of the talent. They were given talents. And when the master returned, they went and gave report of what they have done with the talents. How you gave me five talents, I multiplied it, it became 10. Another one, you gave me two talents, I multiplied it, it became you know, five. Uh, another, uh, came for, another one, you gave me one talent, I didn't do anything with it, I was too lazy, I buried it, but they gave reports. And the master commended some and condemned some because of what they did, the endowment that he gave them. But what I'm trying to say is that they gave reports. And if we are commissioned, we need to give reports. It may be your commission to go and survey a place so that we can plant a church. You need to give a report of your survey. Maybe there is a problem somewhere I will send you to go and help us to resolve the issues. When you come back, we thank God even when the problem has been resolved, or you need to give a report. What did you do? How did you resolve the issue? And what is the present situation in the place? Reports are important. The passage under consideration presents us with essential landmarks in reporting in general and in biblical reporting in particular. And from this passage, we see that five different things that we have to identify in whatever report we give. Number one, reports need to be clear and factual. Number two, Reports need to be concise and focused. Number three, reports need to be complete and full. Number four, reports must be correct and faithful. Number five, the reports must be confirmatory and faith-based. And you will see the reports of these spies. They met this criteria. And I'm asking you, the report you give every month as a pastor, do they meet this criteria? If they don't, you need to step up. If they don't, you need to step up. You need to say, I must rise up to the biblical standard and be able to do it the way God wants it. Let's look at these qualities, these characteristics of good reports one by one, clear and factual. Reports are not meant to be just stories that no feel volumes that may have no relevant facts. Those of people submit reports and then you read page one, you read page two, you read page three, and you're asking yourself, so what is this person trying to say in this report? Is a lot of words, or we're not getting anything out of it. Reports are not meant to be like that. It's not just the volume. So reports are not meant to be just stories that fill volumes, that they have no relevant facts. They must be factual. Reports are meant to be factual documentation of events that have happened. The presentation also must be clear and there must be no ambiguity. We are not reading it and saying, what does it mean? Is it this, is it that? No ambiguity. The reports should be normal. But in the way we write the report, even in our you know, sentences, do you know it's possible for a sentence? I, I wanted to take a pen because I want to dictate something to you. Even in your writing, your sentences must be clear. It's possible for you to write a sentence, but you have written it in a way that it conveys a different information. That report is spoiled. I want you to write this down. God is God is now here. Write it down. God 
is now here. Let me ask you, how many words? Four words. Four words. But look at that now. Look at that here. Move the W after now. Move that W to before here. So the sentence will now read, God is no nowhere. Still same four words. Still the same set of letters and yet different meanings. The first one says, God is now here. The other one says, God is nowhere. Do they mean the same thing? No. No, sir. Four words, same letters. But if somebody is writing and is not writing clearly, and you mix things like that, that's what we're going to have. Maybe you want to write that God is now here, but unfortunately, what you have written is God is nowhere. In your mind, you know that I convey to this individual that God is present, God is mighty, God is now here, but this person is reading, reading the report and is reading the report, God is nowhere. You've conveyed a completely different meaning. Same number of words, same number of letters, same number of uh, you know things like that. That's why it forced me to be very clear. No ambiguity. You cannot afford your writing to be, you know, for people to be second guessing. Otherwise, you will convey something completely different. Do you know that even in your comma, punctuation, punctuation can change everything. I want you to write another one. Write. I'm going to dictate it to you. Write. Man without woman. No, right? Man without a woman is useless. Just write those words. Man without a man. Is useless. Have you written the, that? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Write it again on the second line. Man without a I mean, woman. Man. What, what did I say? The first one. Man without man a woman. Without a woman is useless. Man. No, no, no. Sorry. The way you should write it is woman. The first word, sorry, should be woman, not man. Woman without a man is useless. Sorry for that mistake. The first word is woman. The second word without. The third word are the next one, man is useless. Have you written it twice? First Have you written it twice? Yes, the first one. Yes. Woman, woman without, without a man is useless. Yes, yes. Write it the first time, write it the second time. Have yes. you written it? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's now punctuate the first one. The first one, after woman, put a comma. Mm -hmm. After yes. woman, put a comma. Then after her, put a comma. You know how you read that sentence? Woman without her, man is useless. That's what you are reading. Woman, without her, man is useless. Now let's look at the second one. 
Now, still put woman, comma after the woman, mm -hmm. but now put the second comma after man. So you have the first comma after woman, the second comma after man. You know how you read this one? Woman without her man is useless. In the first sentence, who is useless? The man. The man. In the second sentence, who is useless? The woman. woman. See that? Same number of words, same number of punctuation, but just one punctuation instead of at her is in the man. Changes the sentence completely. Woman without her, man is useless. The second one says, woman without her man, without her husband, without her father is useless. Same number of words, same number of punctuation, and yet two different meanings. Communication is powerful. That's why when we are writing, you need to be clear. You need to be factual. You can't just assume punctuations are necessary. How you structure everything, otherwise you'll be conveying a completely different message that you don't intend to the person that is reading the report. That's why you need to pay attention when you are writing reports. You don't write report when you are stressed. You don't write, you write report when you are clear, you can think well and you read it well. Otherwise, somebody is getting a different thing from what you are trying to convey and you are conveying a different message. I pray the Lord himself will help us in Jesus' name. Those two examples already will show you the possibilities of making mistakes in report writing, the possibilities of ambiguity in report writing, the possibility of conveying a completely different message from what you intend in report writing. Remember the first one, God is nowhere, and yet God is now here. Same number of letters, same number of words, only a misplacement of one letter and two different meanings. The second part, two, I mean, all the words are the same. The, I mean, the, the, the number of punctuation marks are the same, but just one punctuation mark misplaced two different meanings. So as small as all these commas and equal full stop are, they are important because they can give a completely different meaning to what you are already uh, doing. So that's important. So let your report, let them be clear and let them be factual. The two spies, they told Joshua all the that befell them. You see the case of the two apostles also, they told Jesus all things, their deeds and their doctrine. In Joshua chapter 2, verse 23, the Bible says, so the two men returned and descended from the mountains and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. All things that befell them. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. That word all, very important. They told them all. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. The scripture says, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught, their deeds and their doctrine. They told him all. It's important. Tell all. The disciples gave a report of their evangelism efforts. Look at Mark chapter 9 in verse 38. Mark chapter 9, verse 38. And God answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not to us, and we forbade him because. He followed not us. But Jesus said, 
forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against me is on our part. Can you see that? Because they've been on an evangelism trip and Jesus was not there. Now they are reporting what they did. They thought it was right. Jesus Christ said, that's sectarianism. Don't be sectarian. Don't be a by God. Don't do it next time. Leave him to do his job. It's not against me, it's for me. If they didn't tell Jesus that, how would they be corrected? You know, sometimes in giving report, we don't even know some of the things we have done in the assignment that we are given that it should not be done. Maybe there is a better way of doing that. But it's when you give report and say, I did this, I did this, and I did it this way. And then your leader can say, well, what you did is right, but there is a better way to do that thing. Next time, it's better to do it this way, to do it this way. What you did is right, but the method you implemented was not the best. If you did it this way, did it this way, you would have gotten a better result. If you didn't give that report, you will not be corrected. You will not be you know, given a better information that can help you to perform better next time that you will not be able to improve. So it's important. Say it all. When you are wrong, we we'll say you are wrong. When you are right, you'll be commended. When what you have done is right, we we'll say that's right, but you know you can do better. If you do it this way, it will have produced a better report, a better result. So they reported themselves. When you read in Luke, Luke chapter 12, 10, Luke chapter 10, from Luke chapter 10, let me read to you from verse 1. Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whithersoever he himself will come. 70 disciples, 30, 35 teams of a team of two each, he sent them out. Verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. As I said yesterday, I pray when God sends you an assignment, you will return again with joy. Amen. Amen. There will be results. Amen. Amen. Effective on the field. Amen. The 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. They told him what they experienced. They told him what happened on the mission field as giving report. He was the one that sent them out and they gathered back unto him to tell, to tell him the outcome of the mission they have conducted. My brethren, this is what we need to do. The servants that were given pounds and talents, they had to give reports of how they invested the pounds and the talents committed to them. We, we saw it in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 in verse 12. Luke 19 verse 12. The Bible says, he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into that country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered unto them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I go. They were given assignment. They were given money to, to, to do something with to trade with. In verse, in verse 14. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto, unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had died by trading. Yeah. What are the reports of the activities? I told you to occupy till I come. Now I have come. Did you occupy? What is the result of your occupying? 
Verse 16, then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound had gained 10 pounds. I traded with it. I was very diligent. I was very wise. And I've multiplied it from one. Now I have 10. In verse 17, and he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very in a, in a very little, have thou rule, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound had gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept and I have kept laid up in a napkin, for I learned, for I fear thee, because thou art an austere man, and thou takest up that which thou layest not up, layest us down, and repeat, and re and repeat that thou sowest, thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, out of thy mouth, out of thy own mouth, will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. And then he told him, you know that, uh, why didn't you, even, in your foolishness, why didn't you even put your, my money in the bank? At least little interest would have come. If you couldn't multiply the money, but at least I can have some little interest. He went and buried it. He took it from him. But the thing is that they were given assignment, they were given money, and there must be a report. And each one of them gave report. Two had commendation and promotion. One had condemnation and punishment. And the report we give will determine the result eventually that we get. So you can see over here, they gave report and the reports were very factual. What each person did and the outcomes of what they did. The reports were clear and factual. The 12 spies that were sent to spy the land of, I mean, of Canaan, they gave report to Moses and the congregation. We have already read that many times in Numbers chapter 13. They gave report, the land which we have gone to spy is a land where we make an army, and this is the fruit of it. We saw the giants. We saw the, they, they gave report. Because Moses had given them what to look for when they get to the land. I want to know, is the land fatter? Is it savannah? Is it a grassland? Is it uh, with the people? Are they many? Are they few? Are they living in tents or in, in uh, strongholds? You know, Moses told them what to look for. And they brought report. I said, they brought answers to all the questions they were given. They brought, a good, they brought report. Our report must never be ambiguous. The Bible says that if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who will prepare himself for the battle? Your trumpet must not give an uncertain sound. Your report must not be ambiguous. When we read the report, we must be clear what the report is saying, and we must be clear what action we can, we can, we can, we can take based on the report. Ambiguous reports, very useless. Mm -hmm. All the apostles gave report of his missionary journeys to the Jerusalem leadership and to the church. You can read that in Acts chapter 15. When they came back, they gave report. We must give report. Number one, clear and factual. Number two, reports are meant to be concise and focused. They are not meant to be voluminous novels, to be devoured. We don't have the time. Somebody wants to submit a report of his church for the month of May and has gone to write 30 pages for pastor. My brother, pastor doesn't need 30 pages of report. For pastoring the church for one month is too much. What we need can be documented in a page, maybe even half a page. There are some basic, basic information that we need. So reports are not meant to be voluminous novels to be devoured. The essential you know, documentation of facts that can be mined for decision making. Hence, the reports need to be concise. 
The reports need to be focused. And yet, the report must not leave behind essential details. You must give us the relevant details. That's important. Reports are not meant to be a minute by minute documentation of what you have gone to do at 10 a.m. I went to the toilet. We don't need that. At 8 p.m., I slept. The bed I slept on was a very, very nice, uh, you know, cushioned bed. My brother, we are not interested in that. It's good, but your report is not interested in all those. That's important. <laughs> Document the essential facts. The posts are not meant to be a minute-by-minute -minute documentation of operation. It's not meant to be a step-by-step -step documentation of a project. It is meant to be a summary of the essential key points, the specific highlights of the project, the main essence of the project, the main findings of a research, the key outcomes of an investigation, the essential spoils of espionage. You document it. Oh, Pastor. When we got to the house of Rehab, she gave us KK and light soup. My brother, that one is not important. Thank God you didn't go hungry. You know, some people are going to write all that. They ate Semo. They're not interested in the Semo that you ate. What we sent you for. You know, what I'm trying to say is that report is not a minute by minute every single detail of what you did. We know you are going to eat. You have, been, you have been gone for about three, four days. We don't expect you to be up to, to go hungry. But whether you ate fufu in the morning and the cake in the evening, that one is not sufficient. It's not important. You get well, you are not hungry, you are well fed. That's okay. So we must know what we are reporting. It's not reporting every single thing that happened to you when you went to the toilet, when you went to bed, this and that. Keep those out, out, of, the, out of the report. Very important. So the food they ate in Rehab's house is not essential to the report. The colors of Rehab's cottage, they are not important details to be included in the report. Whether they have had window, I mean, blind, window blinds that are red or yellow or black or a mixture, what does that matter? It didn't matter. You don't need to document that. The shorter the report, has to be the more concise and focused then we have to be. Learn to be able to conserve space. Learn to be able to, in a few words, summarize you know, the things that you need to do. Reports must be concise. Reports must be focused. You know, it's like when you take a magnifying glass and you focus the rays of the sun and you focus it on the paper large rays of the sun, you focus it and you get a tiny spot on the paper. Let your report be like that, concentrated, focused, a report that is concise, very important. The shorter the report has to be, the more concise and focused then we have to be. Knowing what to include and knowing what to leave out of the report is not always easy, however, we are better at it as we practice and we get experienced. The report I write today is much better than the report I wrote 20 years ago because I'm more experienced in ministry. I know what to include and what not to include. And the same way, your reports will get better, better with practice, better with experience. But you need to understand reports must be concise, it must be focused. Somebody doesn't have all the time to read the report. And yet, if the report is concise and focused, we can read it, get the whole essence of the whole thing, move on, and be able to do the right thing that we need to do. So number one, your report must be clear and factual. Number two, your report must be concise and focused. Number three, your report must be complete and full. It is possible for a report to tell the truth 
but not to tell the whole truth. For God expects us to tell the whole truth, not just some, to tell all. When somebody tells the truth or doesn't tell the whole truth, this will be a partial misleading report. The spies told Joshua all things that befell them. The apostles told Jesus all things. In fact, it goes on to specify that they told Jesus all the things included in their deeds, what they had done, and in their doctrine, what they had taught. So it was not just, so there were sectionalized reports. These were the healings and the miracles we carried out. This was what we taught the people, their deeds and their doctrine. They told him, and that's what we need to do. Our deeds and our doctrine, we need to tell all. The emphasis is on all. It should not, you know, that emphasis on all should be noticed. Very important. Look at Acts chapter 15, verse 4. Acts chapter 15, verse 4. Acts chapter 15, verse 4. And when they came, and when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and, and of the apostles and elders, and they declared how many things? All things that, that God has done with them. He declared all things that God had done with them. My brother, when you go on an assignment, declare all things that God has done with you. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, verse 27. And when they were come and gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Rehearsed all. That emphasis is important. Let your report be called. Complete. Let your report be full. All. Very important. Even on one occasion, Jesus corrected the, 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 the bigotry of the disciples as a result of their, of their report. They said, we saw somebody asking our devils, we told him, never do it again. Jesus corrected them. That's not the right thing to do. Next time, don't forbid him, allow him to move on. Because they gave report of all. On another occasion, he gave them further insight and told them where to place their priorities. They said, even the demons were subject unto us. Christ said, in that rejoice not, but rejoice that your names are written in the book of heaven. Place your emphasis on the right spot. Complete and full report enables us to make informed decisions that stand the chance of being right and useful. Decisions that are based on partial you know, truths or half truths are prone to be wrong and very, very misleading. So what are we saying? Let your report be complete. Let it be full. Don't hide any part of it. Mm -hmm. Tell it all. Like I said, we're not interested in the cutting of Rehab's uh, house was red or yellow. That one is not important. We ate Sebo or we ate Apu. That one is not important. We went to bed at 10, 10 p.m. and rose up. That may not be important. But the relevant facts that are important, essential to the mission, Declare all. That's the scriptures. Be transparent. Tell it all. Number four. 
the report must be correct and faithful. We are not to use report to impress people. You know, there are people that want to use report to impress people. No, don't use report to impress your pastor. Tell it the way it is. Be faithful. Because sometimes you can be sent on an assignment and things have not gone out the way we expect it to go. Don't doctor the report. Just tell it the way it is. This mentality will usually lead to falsification. Let me give you an example. Can you look up? Yes, A particular king, he wanted to elect the next king of the kingdom. And he said that he wanted to elect one of the young children to be the king of the kingdom. And then he told them, he called all the young people in the kingdom and he said, I'm going to do one thing. Next year, this time, I'm going to select one of you to be the next king that will be replacing me. But before then, I'm going to give you an assignment. And all of them were very excited. So he gave them the assignment. He gave each one of them seed, seed, seed. And then he told them, I want you to go and plant this seed in a pot. And in one year's time, I want you to bring the plant that grows out of the seed. And then we're going to see, and it's going to be a competition. And I'm going to choose one of you to be a king. So he gave them that, and all of them, they went. And all those children, they planted the seed. They were watering the seed. The seed was not growing. And then they were worried. My seed is not growing. So you know what they did? One by one, one by one, one by one. Some of them went and got new seeds, removed the seed that the king gave them, throw it away. And then they planted the new seed and they started watering. So the seed began to grow. <coughs> And some of them were bringing out flowers. So you are seeing red, yellow, green, you know, very beautiful plants. But there was one boy, he was sad. The others didn't tell him what they've done. They were saying, did you see the seed that the king gave me? How it's growing? In fact, I'm going to show the king this. But the boy said, the one that the king gave to me, I've been watering it, I've been looking after it. But this seed is not growing. It kept on. A year later, all of them came to come and see the king. And as they came to come and see the king, many of them were joyful. All of them, they were exhibiting all their, you know, their, their plants. Say, look at my plant. My own is beautiful. Red flowers. Your own is beautiful. Yellow flowers. This one is great. Look at the way it's coming. They were very happy. But the boy, the other boy, he was very sad. Look at what the result my colleagues are getting. Look at the result I got, nothing. And eventually the king received all the children. And then the king commended all of them for their efforts, for putting in a lot of effort, for being faithful, watching the seed that was given them. And then he said, have you looked at all your all what we have produced, very, very beautiful. But I'm going to announce the king. And all these children, they were going to be the one. I'm going to be the one. My plant is the, is the best. My own, the flowers are, you know, very inviting. Eventually, the king called that boy that had no, nothing in his, uh, in his pot. And he said, this is the new king. I don't know they were. He doesn't have anything. But look at all our plants. The king said yes. He doesn't have anything. But he was the only one that was faithful. He was the only one that kept to instruction. I gave all of you boiled seeds. Those seeds were not meant to germinate. 
So I don't know how you got the seeds that are germinating. All of you ought to come with what without anything because the seeds I gave you, I boiled those seeds and dried them up. Life has gone out of those seeds. They were not meant to germinate. So it shows that you change the rules. You got another seed. You are not faithful. Not faithful to instruction. You are not honest. You see what I'm talking about? They wanted to impress the king. There is no need to impress the king. Say it the way it is. Give your report the way it is. Let your report be correct. Let your report be faithful. If the seed is a boiled seed that cannot grow, not try it like that. I tell the king, this is the seed that was given. I have not told the no result. He will know you are faithful. Don't go and introduce a new one. You know, that's what is happening to some pastors. They want to impress their, their location. And God has not given them the gifts of the spirit or the you know, power to heal yet. But they want to impress people around. Then they go to occult to go and get dark powers, occultic powers, to come and be using in the church. People are slain in the spirit. And you see, miracle is happening. Counterfeit power. My brother, don't use counterfeit power. If the seed you have been given, you are watering it is not growing, be faithful. Be faithful. The king is watching you. Don't be like those other, other children that went to change the seed and now the seed is growing because they want to impress the world. They want to impress the king. There is no reason, there is no place for impressing anybody. Let your report be correct. Let your report be faithful. So if somebody has the mentality of wanting to impress people, it will lead to no falsification of reports. The report of Ananias and Sapphira. That's what happened. Because they wanted to impress Peter. And then they were telling things that were not true. And Peter said, ah, are you lying to the Holy Ghost? You see the end of result. Both of them died and went to hell. Don't falsify your report. Let your report be correct. Let it be faithful. Amen. 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 And come and give an incorrect report, a falsified report, an untruthful report to the apostle. Don't do that. Reports are not meant to be used for revenge. You remember when Joab, when David told Joab to go and count, to go and number Israel? And Joab didn't want to number Israel. Joab said, God can to his people the way he wants. What, what, what are you doing? And David said, I'm king. I command you, go and number Israel. So eventually Joab went to go and number Israel. Do you know the report he gave to David? You go and read it. It was not a correct report. The census that Joab gave to David was a different figure. Read the story, you will see it there. It's like, you force me to go, you force me to go and do the census. I will do the census, but you will not get the right result. <laughs> revenge. My brother, reports are not meant to be used to revenge, to use to spite your leader, to use to spite the leadership, to use as a kind of a, of, of, of a tool. No, 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 no. Let your report be correct. Let your report, let it be factual. Don't use it to revenge like they, like Joab. Joab gave an incorrect result, census. So even the score with David, it's like, I get you. Reports are not meant to be used to create a climate of fear, the first spice, the exaggerated, the strength and stature of the giants. They said, we saw the enemy, the sons of Anak. And they created fear in the mind of the people that caused them to be, fear, to be fearful. And all the congregation began to weep. Reports are not meant for you to use it to intimidate people, for you to use it to, no. Let it be correct and faithful. Say what you have seen, but don't say it in a way as to put fear and dread and terror in the heart of people who saw the giants. In fact, if we see what the people we saw, it was by the grace of God that we are alive today, they would have killed us. Because it's a land that eat up the inhabitants thereof. Why are the people living in that land? They've not been eating up. That's exaggeration. 
that report has a problem. Let your report be correct. Let your report be faithful. We must, give, we must never give doctored reports or alter the records in a fraudulent way. You remember Luke chapter 16? That servant that told, said, let's alter this, let's change this, let's change this. You owe my master 10,000, write 5,000, because he's planning a crooked operation. No, don't doctor the report. Don't alter the report. Tell it all, tell it the way it is. Let it be correct, be faithful. It is required in stewardship that a man should be found faithful. faithful. Tell it like it is. Put things in their proper perspective. Don't exaggerate. Don't diminish. Let the report be correct and faithful. Don't inflate statements. Don't inflate attendance figures. Pastor is coming. You want to impress pastor. Your congregation is only 10. You know? Then you say, in fact, we are 30. Who are you deceiving? Just tell it the way it is. You know, I came across a person that was telling me about their church, and I told that individual, that's not the right way. The congregation is very worldly, but they know that the overseer does not like worldliness. So when the overseer was going to come from Africa, the pastor called everybody and told all the ladies in the church, when the pastor is around, the overseer is around, I don't want any of you to wear trousers. I don't want any of you to put on your ear hearing. You must dress in a godly way. When the overseer has gone, you can go back to your, that's doctoring the thing. So the overseer will come. We see the people, they are wearing skirts. We see the people, they are not using earring. And we say, we thank God for these godly sisters. Deceived. And then when he goes back, then they go back to their, that pastor is not helping the people. Let the overseer come and see the church the way it is. If he needs to rebuke, he rebukes. If he needs to tell the people, this is not the way. Let him, let him do that. Don't doctor the church. Don't doctor your report. Very, very important. I told that individual is a leader, was a leader in the church. I said, no, that should not be done because you are giving a wrong impression to your overseer. You are telling him this is how the church is, but you know that that's not how the church is. You know that the people have been told what to do when he's around. And when he has gone, they can go back into their normal default mode. That's deception. And there are people that do that. The report they say to impress the overseer because they know what the overseer wants to hear. So they write that in the report. They know what he wants to, to see. Don't do that. Be faithful. Let your report be correct. Let your report be faithful. Don't drop to attendance figures. Say it the way it is. And the Lord himself will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our report must be confirmatory. It must be faith-based. You see these people? And they said unto Joshua, truly, the Lord had delivered into our hands all the land. For even all the inhabitants of the country, they do faith because of us. They were very smart. They were very upbeat. They believed the word of God. What God had told them, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. They believed it and said, when we got there, we saw people that were melting. In fact, God's word is true. They were very upbeat. Their report confirmed God's promise that they had given them. It was an upbeat report based on faith. It was a good report. You remember the report of the 12 spies that went to the land of Canaan in Numbers chapter 13? They were mixed reports. Ten of them gave what God called an evil report because that report was based on fear and unbelief. It was based on sight. And Caleb and Joshua gave a good report because that report was based on faith and the promise of God. Just as there were unbelieving spies in Moses' time, there are still wicked servants today. There are still, you know, unfaithful and unbelieving, even leaders today. 
However, the good and faithful and faithful servants are also ever present. The question is, which one are you going to be? Mm. A leader like Caleb and Joshua bringing confirmatory and faith-based report. A leader like these two spies telling their leader, in fact, the place is right for takeover. We can see the people are melting. In fact, God has given us the land. We can go in and nothing is going to we'll be able to possess. Are you going to be a leader like that, that your report is confirmatory, your report is faith-based, or are you going to be like the unbelieving spies that say, we'll be not able, we are not able to go in to possess the land because the chariots are there, because the strong goals are there, because the giants are there, because the people, we are like grasshoppers. Who, where, what are you going to be? I pray that as we have studied tonight, the report of, you know, responsible servant. I pray you will be a responsible servant in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. power over all demons. The report they later brought was confirmatory of this endowment. He said, you gave us power over all these spirits. The devils were subject unto us. We saw it happen. Without operating in denial, our report must be faith-based and confirmatory of God's plan and promises. We must see with the eyes of faith. We must see with the eyes of God. Yes, the giants are there, but we are well able. Yes, the giants are there, but we are well able. Yes, you know, the city's strong goals are there. Yet we are well able because the weapons of our warfare, they are not there, but they are mighty true God. So the pulling down of strongholds, your report is confirmatory and faith-based. And I pray that our report will have all these characteristics. You ask yes. the report you submit every month. Mm. Is that report clear and factual? Mm. Is the report concise and focused? Is the report complete and full? Is the report correct and faithful? Is the report confirmatory and faith-based? Analyze, weigh yourself in the balance. Evaluate your report. You send it every month and another month is coming to an end, we're going to get your report. Will there be an improvement on that report to the one you submitted in April? Is there going to be an improvement? And we say, ah, we thank God your report has improved. We got more information. You told it all. We can see, in fact, we, 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 can, we can assess your location better than we were able to be before because now we have a greater information, relevant information in the report. I pray that the Lord said will make it to be in Jesus' name. Amen. It's part of your stewardship. It's not just to cast out demons. You must come back mm. and tell it to God. Even the demons were subject unto us. It's not just to preach. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You need to come back and tell me what you have taught. Reports are important. Your stewardship is not complete without reports. And when the report is not proper, your, report, your, your stewardship is faulty. But I pray that every one of us on the platform tonight, your report will not be faulty. Amen. 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 God will help you. Amen. God will not be ambiguous. Amen. You are trying to say God is now here. You will not be conveying the information. God is nowhere. Amen. When you want to say man without a woman, I mean woman without a man is useless. You will not be saying woman without a man is useless. Amen. You want to say man is useless, but what you have conveyed is that woman is useless because your punctuation is bad. I pray that our punctuation, our handwriting, our documentation, everything will be, will be proper. So that yeah. when you give reports, the master will be able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Have rule over 10 cities. Mm -hmm. Have rule over five cities.
Mm. I pray the Lord is saying we we'll do that in Jesus' name. Let's rise up. Mm. Yes, Lord, tonight we have looked at reports of responsible service. I wait your report. For what you have taught me to do, Lord, I'm so grateful. Evaluate your report. My report to God Almighty Father, my report to be correct and factual. Evaluate your report. That my report concise and focused. And Father, that my report, O oh Lord, will be complete and full. That my report will be correct and faithful. That my report will be confirmatory. Oh, oh Lord, help me. I pray thee, O oh Lord, that my report, it will be all that I'm supposed to give, O oh Lord, as a faithful servant. Pray that the Lord will help you. That will reward. Oh my Father, you will help me, Lord, to give the correct report every moment of my life. Thank you. Every moment of my ministry. Lord, help me to give the correct, the right report in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Or whatever. Oh, yeah. Don't say the report is, is, is just one yeah. of those things. No, it's part yeah. of your stewardship. Oh, it's yeah. a significant part of your stewardship. Yeah. If you do everything right and your report is not right, your stewardship is not for good. Stewardship. Jesus. Very important, my brother. Very important, my sister. Good reports. Full size report. Clear report. Factual report. Focus report. Complete report. Full report. Correct report. Faithful report. Confirmatory report. Based report. Precious. In, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray that you help us to put importance on the report we are writing. Amen. To be neat. Amen. To be clear. Amen. Not just to write as if a, a, a end is just scratching the floor. Amen. We painstakingly Present our report. We are not. We are not in a hurry. Presentable report, clear, focused, concise, full, complete. Oh Lord, help us that when our report is weighed in the balances, it will not be found wanting in Jesus' name. We can learn tonight that we can see in the report of those spies that they will be found in our report on a monthly basis in Jesus' name. Amen. Telling us that our stewards, reports are an important part of our stewardship. Help us to take it to heart and not to take it with levity in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we practice, help us to improve. Amen. When we are corrected about, about, about the report we are submitted, just like the disciples were corrected about the report, the, 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 the correction is not meant to kill us. Correction is not meant to just, uh, you know, uh, just bring us down. Correction is to help us to improve so that next time we can give a better report. Help us to positively re I mean, receive correction when we are given in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because we have answered. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen.